Transhumanism, the philosophy slash fad that says humans shouldn't just use technology to make life a little bit easier, they should use technology to completely redefine what it means to be human. We're talking brain chips, reprogramming DNA, and uploading your consciousness to the cloud. Today, we're gonna break it all down. I'm King Trout, and I don't trust wireback clankers. Transhumanism is basically a philosophical and cultural movement wherein the idea is to use technology not just to improve our lives, but to fundamentally change at its core what it means to be a human by upgrading or enhancing our physical and mental capacities. At its heart, transhumanism says that biology is a limitation and that through the use of technology, this limitation can be overcome. The end game is a so-called post-human future. Beings who are smarter, stronger, longer lived, and potentially even immortal or non-biological. A few of the goals of transhumanism are genetic engineering, designing human beings to be healthier, smarter, or better adapted. Brain-computer interfaces, plugging your brain directly into a machine for direct communication or boosted intelligence. Life extension, using biotechnology, nanotechnology, and AI to radically extend the human lifespan. Mind uploading, transferring your consciousness to a computer so you can theoretically live forever. And cyborg enhancements, implants, robotics, or nanotech augmentations that would give you new abilities. Sounds great, right? Well, we'll talk about that. Where did it all start? Well, the term transhumanism first popped up in 1957, courtesy of a man named Julian Huxley. If that last name sounds familiar, it's because he's the brother of author Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley, who famously wrote the novel Brave New World, which will become hilariously ironic when you find out what his brother was proposing. Christmas at the Huxley home must have been very awkward. Julian wasn't quite as fun as his brother. He was a biologist, he was UNESCO's first director, and he was also a eugenicist. Basically, his elevator pitch for transhumanism was, what if we use technology to make people better? Also, no follow-up questions on what it means to be better. Huxley's 1957 essay painted a vision of the future of humanity transcending its limitations. Wow, sounds great. And not shockingly at all, the essay reeks of elitism. Having coined the term transhumanism, it kind of floated around in the ether in fringe futurist circles until the 1990s, when it went full professional. Enter the World Transhumanist Association. Think of it as Comic-Con, in that it's full of greasy nerds, but these greasy nerds want to edit your DNA. They later rebranded as Humanity Plus, because adding a plus sign makes everything sound better. Or like a, like a fucking streaming service. I even set you up with all the pluses. Disney Plus? Yep. Paramount Plus? Uh-huh. Apple TV Plus? Oh boy, yeah. ESPN Plus? Yeah. Huh? CNN Plus? Yep. Keanu Reeves Plus? Yep. Fisher Price Plus? Yep. Humanity Plus. They wrote manifestos, held conferences, and attempted to convince everyone that cyborg upgrades were serious philosophy, not just the plot to like two dozen movies from the late 80s. Currently, their mission statement is that they want people to be better than well. Which sounds like the bullshit slogan to a pyramid scheme where they're selling smoothies. It's a pyramid scheme. It's not a pyramid scheme, it's a reverse funnel system. Turn it upside down. Oh, God damn it! They aim to achieve the goal of extrapy, which is just their $10 word for immortality. Who is pushing for this movement? Well, there's a few high-profile people. Futurists like Ray Kurzweil, an inventor, Google executive, and man who predicted that by 2045, humans and AI will merge in a glorious singularity. He takes 80 supplements a day so he can live long enough to see this happen, which means either he knows something we don't, or he's just brewing a big old batch of kidney stones. Man really likes having expensive piss. Kurzweil's pitch is always shiny. Immortality, intelligence upgrades, eternal youth. It's like a TED Talk meets a timeshare scam. There's Nick Bostrom, Oxford philosopher and founder of the Future of Humanity Institute. 
He's the guy who asks the serious questions like what if an advanced AI wipes us out? Or what if reality is just a simulation? Or what if we accidentally create a race of post-human super beings who consider what was once considered a normal human being to be subhuman and scum? He's serious, academic, and deeply unsettling. And despite the fact that he spent his entire philosophical career finding reasons why advancing with this technology could be a bad thing, he still pushes for it to take place. Which I find very odd. Also, one time he got caught using the, uh, the gamer word in his Oxford emails, um, wherein he also said that blacks are less intelligent than whites. And he wants to be in charge of uh, editing DNA to uh, select for desired traits. Then there's the billionaires. Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Peter Thiel. Some guys with a little more money than empathy. Musk pushes Neuralink. W what if your, your brain could, could connect, connect directly to Twitter? I can't do a good Musk. I don't know, he's, he's got a weird way of talking. Strange Cat. Peter Thiel is funding longevity research so that he can live forever. He also swaps out his blood for the blood of teenagers. And if you watch the news, he has been saying some very strange things about his opinions as to what the Antichrist will appear as. What a weird group of people, man. Then, uh, excuse me, there's Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. He's been busy selling his AI upgrades while investing heavily in embryo selection startups. Because apparently predictive analytics now applies to which fetus will have the better jump shot. Jamie, pull up the clip. <laughs> Suck my dick and don't forget to work the balls. Kobe. Institutions like the previously mentioned Humanity Plus, biotech startups, and think tanks are also pushing for these ideas. These aren't conspiracy groups meeting in smoke-filled rooms. You know, they're very public about what they want to happen. Essentially, the pitch is, hey, mortality sucks. Uh, pay us a load of money and maybe your grandkids will be half clanker. Sorry, my biases are showing. So, if I take such issue with transhumanism, what exactly are the problems? Well, let's talk about them. For starters, there's the question of retaining human dignity. Francis Fukuyama, a political philosopher with a very fun name to say, Francis Fukuyama, has said that transhumanism is the most dangerous idea in the history of humankind. Now, why did Francis Fukuyama say this? Well, he argued that our entire political system is based off of equality. So, if there is a group of people who are engineered to be better in one way or another, you've essentially tiered rights. There would end up being rights that only applied to a certain category of people. There's the fear of financial inequality, because especially in the beginning, these upgrades won't be free, they'll be incredibly expensive. So the rich will buy immortality and genetic boosts, while the poor can fuck off to the bargain bin of evolution. It would create a system of hereditary inequality on steroids. Imagine a future where upper class literally means genetically superior. The rest of us, permanent genetic peasants, cursed with seasonal allergies and myopia. One of the classic philosophical objections to transhumanism is the Ship of Theseus thought experiment. The Ship of Theseus thought experiment, of course, being when you imagine a ship sitting on a set of trolley tracks with a trolley barreling towards it. You have control over a lever. If you stand by and do nothing, the cat is both alive and dead simultaneously. But if you pull the lever, all of this was just shadow puppets on a cave wall. But seriously, I respect your intelligence enough for you to know what the ship of Theseus thought experiment is. Applying that to transhumanism, basically the question is, if we start replacing you know, brain function with computers, or organs with synthetic ones, or limbs with cybernetic ones, at what point do we no longer stay human? Transhumanists promise continuity that you'll still remain you, but there is the philosophical question of whether a computer with your thoughts in it is you. There's the fear that humanity will lose its uniqueness. Political philosopher Michael Sandel warns that in a future where parents pick the genes of their children, 
the randomness or luck of the draw that makes us unique will go away. Life is no longer a gift, per se. If your kid is tall and smart and good at violin, it's not, wow, how blessed. It's, yeah, we paid extra for that. Also, there's no more blaming anybody except your parents if you're screwed up in some way. If you suck at math, it's because your parents made bad customization options. And saving the best for last, we got the big one. Catastrophic existential risk. Some transhumanist projects could literally bring about the end of humanity. There's the loss of control to superintelligence. Basically, if human minds are merged with artificial intelligence or outcompeted by artificial intelligence, we could live in a world where there are entities that are far, far smarter than us, but may not necessarily align with our human values. Even if the intentions are good, a misaligned artificial intelligence could accidentally bring about the end of humanity, i.e. if you asked the artificial intelligence to, quote, end human suffering, I mean, a legitimate way to end human suffering is to make human beings extinct. So that would technically bring about an end to it. So that's a risk. There are the potential for genetic catastrophes. Germline editing, when you edit the sperm, eggs, or embryos, permanently alters human DNA. A single unforeseen mutation or ecological effect could cascade across generations, essentially breaking the human genome. If these changes spread widely, there is no undo button. We could lock into harmful traits indefinitely. There's the risk of irreversible social stratification. Imagine a world where there is a small select group of people who can afford boosted intelligence or increased disease resistance or radical extensions to the length of their life. That doesn't just create inequality, it creates post-human overlords versus baseline traditional human beings. And if that social structure locks in Humanity could essentially be divided into two castes, which some argue is a fate worse than extinction. There's the risk of unintended biological or ecological impacts. Enhanced, humans may interact with the environment in unpredictable ways. Engineered microbes, nanotech implants, or human-machine hybrids could trigger unforeseen pandemics or ecological disasters. Remember when DDT was considered a good thing? before Silent Spring, and even a minor accident in one lab could have species-wide consequences. Imagine if while modifying a gene, a scientist accidentally creates a contagious form of stage 4 cancer. There is the risk for the loss of human agency. The more we integrate with tech, i.e. sticking a computer chip in your brain, the easier it becomes for corporations or governments or AIs to take control of you. If autonomy disappears and human beings become programmable, many argue that is essentially the end of what we once knew as humanity. Also, if you cut me off in traffic and have a Neuralink, I'm going to use my Flipper Zero to make you gender dysphoric. There's the risk of civilizational collapse through misuse. We're human beings, so of course there will be enhancements designed for war. Think uh, super soldiers, psychological modifications, or bioweapons. This could escalate international arms races. Plus, uh, single misuse, a rogue state, terrorist group, what have you, could unleash the tools that would lead to the downfall of humanity. And there is the so-called value lock-in problem. If transhumanist tech allows for one ideology or corporation or regime to gain overwhelming power, we could be permanently locked in to their ideals. Their values could be frozen into the future. Humanity might not go extinct, per se, but we could be trapped living under an authoritarian surveillance state or a techno-dictatorship. The world could also literally become the plot of I have no mouth and I must scream. Okay, let's be fair. Some of this tech is good. Pacemakers save lives, cochlear implants restore hearing, CRISPR can be used to resolve deadly genetic diseases. These are real, concrete benefits. But the line between therapy and enhancement is a little bit blurry. 
Fixing Huntington's disease? Good! Making sure that your child will grow up to be 6 foot 5 with 160 IQ with your preferred hair and eye color? Eh, we're getting, we're getting a little, you know, eh, there, you know? So, what can we do about these risks? Well, for starters, we can slow down. Being cautious around technology with such very serious potential consequences isn't being a Luddite. It's being sane. And also, we should have a real debate. This isn't, uh, do we want hoverboards? This is, where do we intend to go as a species? A topic that should probably involve more than just a few TED Talks. What is my, what is my opinion on transhumanism? Well, in case you haven't picked up through context clues over the past this amount of time, Fuck transhumanism. I am of the opinion that attempting to play God is a bad idea. The road to hell is paved with etc. etc. Transhumanism promises shiny things. No aging, no disease, you'll think faster. Wow. But the critiques are screaming red flags. Inequality, coercion, surveillance... And also the existential risk for the erasure of humanity. Read up, argue, and decide where you stand. Because the future of humanity shouldn't be decided by a handful of guys with three commas in their bank account. Version 1.0 of humanity is messy, imperfect, and kind of dumb. But baby, that's just what we are. As always, I've been King Trout. Thank you for watching. I'll see you when I see you. Love you. Bye.